Chair, I recognize the member for Calgary Elbow. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, speaker, and, and uh, it's my pleasure and honour to rise and speak in, in favour of, uh, of Bill 23. And uh, speaking immediately after the member for Edmonton Centre, I think is uh, is a good uh, a place to pick up. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, one of my honourable colleagues here and I were uh, talking about earlier is that this bill has managed to do a very good job of finding the right balance on what is a very complex issue. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of uh, my Honourable colleagues have found our constituency offices, especially those of us in inner city uh, urban uh, constituencies, although certainly not limited to that, um, have uh, received a lot of feedback on this um, uh, legislation, at least certainly initially. And there was a lot of concern uh, that, uh, uh, that there uh, was going to be an overreach uh, in reaction to uh, a bill that is uh, ostensibly to, to uh, respond to a court uh, ruling. In this case, I think the government's got it right. Uh, they've, they've found the balance, um, and it is just remarkable, Mr. Speaker, that in uh, this assembly there actually are some issues that aren't purely black and white, uh, that actually we can find some, some, some middle ground and, and uh, some, some thoughtful uh, nuance. Uh, and having heard from many of my constituents, I'm certainly very happy to uh, be able to respond to them that, in fact, the bill uh, does meet court-mandated uh, uh, changes. Uh, without overreaching and, and does provide uh, protections uh, uh, to uh, especially older Albertans. Uh, and so I'm uh, very happy to, to support the bill. Um, given the, um, uh, the, that court order that uh, came down back in uh, January of, of 2017, of course we knew that, uh, that these changes <coughs> needed to be made. Um, and uh, of course brings Alberta into line with the rest of the country. Uh, I've always uh, have a, a red flag go up every time I hear that Alberta is the only province or one of the only provinces that does or doesn't do a certain thing. Uh, and uh, that's an, always an area for further investigation and this is another one of those areas where uh, we were in fact one of only two provinces that uh, did not uh, have age read into our uh, Provincial Human Rights Code. Uh, we now have uh, the courts having done that for us. Uh, this legislation uh, makes that change uh, official. Um, I do want to thank everyone who has reached out both to my constituency office and I know to many uh, other members uh, to provide uh, feedback. There was a very comprehensive uh, and thoughtful consultation process on what is a very complex issue and I'm, I'm happy to, to, uh, to know that this bill will pass. It does recognize that Albertans over the age of 55 may opt out uh, or opt to live uh, together in a community of people with the same uh, interests and the same age uh, demographic and that 15 year grace period does give uh, uh, Albertans an opportunity to uh, implement, to, uh, to transition into the new rules. Uh, condo owners uh, consulted uh, along the process uh, strongly indicated that individuals should have a choice in their housing and lifestyle decisions. Um, and this legislation, including exemptions uh, for seniors only housing, does mean that buildings can cater exclusively to those over 55. Uh, and that phase-in period allows people who are now currently in their 40s to move into that uh, senior age bracket. Uh, condo owners now then therefore have a, a more than a decade to phase in the new rules, um, uh, but renters of course will notice the changes uh, as of the 1st of January of next year. Um, the uh, um, point I wanted to, to make on that is, is that uh, this does seem to again strike the right balance between allowing Albertans choice in their housing but also recognizing that uh, there are families who will choose to live in, in, uh, in condos and apartments. Uh, it does expand the housing options for those uh, families. And while I certainly have heard from some landlords who are concerned about that, um, I believe that uh, any issues or challenges that may be faced by landlords are far outweighed by the benefits to Albertans uh, who uh, now have more housing options. Uh, and uh, protects, I think, on, uh, on, in striking that balance, uh, where we cannot meet uh, the, the needs or the requests of, of both sides of, a, of an issue. I think uh, on this case we've come down on the right side uh, of this issue by uh, allowing more housing options uh, in a way that I don't believe uh, greatly impairs the ability of a, of a landlord to, uh, to, to, to make a living uh, or to rent out, uh, rent out their, their um, uh, buildings. Uh, other exemptions in the bill, the ameliorative programs, uh, uh, for example, buildings set aside to help members of vulnerable population, of course, are, are necessary uh, and welcome. Um, programs such as employment or internship programs for youth, uh, prior to the introduction of this legislation, again, we were the only um, uh, 
province whose human rights legislation did not provide an exemption for ameliorative, ameliorative programs uh, or activities, and again, uh, very happy to see that. Um, we uh, ensure in this legislation that uh, the proposed amendments uh, uh, ensure that programs providing a benefit to minors and seniors, such as discounted movie tickets, those sorts of things, are in fact allowed to continue. So given all of that, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Alberta Party Caucus uh, is very proud to support this bill and look forward to voting in favour at third reading. Thank you.